Hi, everyone. My name is Sahibjeet Pramor. I am the director of the Data Management and Research Department here at the LifeRaft Group. And today I'm extremely excited to go ahead and share this series of Let's Get the Gist of It, where we will be talking about clinical trials. A few things before we begin. The LifeRaft Group provides a fair and balanced approach to supporting patients, and we do not promote any commercial or investigational products due to any financial relationships. We are not medical professionals, and we do not intend to provide any medical diagnosis or make any specific treatment recommendations. Instead, we only provide information for you to discuss with your doctor. This session will be recorded and shared afterwards. We ask all the attendees to utilize the Q&A feature in Zoom to ask questions. We will have time at the end to answer questions. Uh, please note that the Q&A session will not be recorded. To begin, the first question we like to ask is, what are clinical trials? Clinical trials are research studies designed to test new treatments, medications, or medical procedures on human participants to understand the safety and or efficacy of the product or procedure. Why are the clinical trials important? Clinical trials are important because they play a crucial role in advancing medical knowledge and improving patient care by providing evidence-based information about the efficacy and safety of new treatments. On this slide, there are types of clinical trials. Placebo-controlled trials are when some participants receive the experimental treatment while others receive a placebo. Participants are usually unaware of whether they are receiving the active treatment or the placebo, helping minimize bias in reporting outcomes. Placebo-controlled trials are almost always randomized. So moving forward to the next one, randomized controlled trials, or RCTs. These involve randomly assigning participants to different treatment groups. This helps ensure each participant has a chance of being assigned to any of the treatment groups, reducing the bias and ensuring reliability of the results. It's important to note that placebo-controlled trials are almost always randomized, as I had shared, so these two overlap a bit on their descriptions. Another type of clinical trial are the blind trials. In these types, they are uh, withholding information about the treatment assignment from either the participant, the researcher, or both. Single blind refers to the participant being unaware of which treatment they are receiving. Double blind refers to when both participant and the researcher are unaware of the treatment that is being administered. Open label trials are when both the participant and the researcher knows which treatment each participant is receiving. All the trials discussed today are open label. Oftentimes when we are seeing information about clinical trials, we'll see the words dose escalation and dose expansion. Dose escalation occurs typically during phase one of the study and is done by increasing the dose, usually no more than two times in each step in a sequential fa fashion until target dose or doses are obtained. Patients start at the safe starting dose that is determined in animal studies, which support the duration and dose in humans. Dose expansion occurs after dose escalation once the safe doses are, are determined. The goal during dose expansion is to understand the doses that may be used, but in a longer duration than the dose escalation period. The dose es expansion period typically has more patients enrolled than the dose escalation period, and it also helps identify preliminary side effects and help re uh, refine the dosing regimen. I want to go ahead and take a moment to share the LifeRaft Group's GIST clinical data base. Uh, this is a clinical trials database that we house within the LifeRaft group, 
and we have all of the trials that are recruiting, no longer recruiting, um, have been completed for just patients. And if you have not already gone on to here, I encourage you to check it out. Here's the webpage, justtrials.org. And it is great because you're able to really refine your searches for clinical trials. Next, I want to also talk about the global clinical trial database. Uh, this very similar to the Life Raft Group clinical trial database. It is international, so it's not just for U.S. clinical trials. Uh, but the clinicaltrials.gov is the government clinical trial database, and this has all clinical trials and not just for just patients. So I did also want to share about this one, very similar to our clinical trials. Uh, users are able to refine their searches to get more of a specific uh, trial information that they're looking for. Now I want to go ahead and talk about clinical trials. This portion of my webinar will be grouped into uh, focused trials. So the first one we're going to be talking about are clinical trials for KIT and PDGFRA mutations. The first clinical trial that I want to speak about is the PEAK trial by Cogent Biosciences. An overview of this trial is that it is an open-label open international study of bezoclastinib, also known as CGT9486, in combination with sunitinib. For this, patients must have a confirmed locally advanced metastatic and or unresectable gist. This will compare the efficacy of bezoclastinib plus sunitinib to sunitinib alone in a one-to-one -one randomized manner. So this trial is for second line, uh, and a one-to-one -one randomized manner means that there is the two cohorts, the combination of the bezoclastinib plus the sunitinib, and the sunitinib will have an even, even distribution. So there will be, if there were four members uh, looking to get onto the trial due to the one-to-one, -to -one, two will be assigned to, randomly assigned to the combo cohort, and two will be assigned to the, uh, just the sunitinib. In terms of eligibility, patients must have prior treatment to imatinib only or who are intolerant to imatinib. So again, it is second line. Patients who have taken sunitinib are not eligible, and patients with a KIT mutation are eligible. Patients with a PDGFRA or SDH deficient GIST are ineligible. So this is only open to patients with a KIT mutation. Down below, I do have the contact information for the study sponsor. If you have any additional questions, uh, you are also able to reach out to, to me if you have any questions and we'll be happy to answer them. As I had shared, this is an international study. So there are trial sites in, um, in a lot of different countries, including uh, the United States and the Specific states within the United States are Alabama, Arizona, California, Colorado, Washington, D.C., Florida, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, and Wisconsin. The next trial I wanna talk about is the INSIGHT trial by Decipra. This is an open label comparing the efficacy of repritinib to sunitinib in patients with GIST who have progressed on first line treatment with imatinib only. So it is also second line. And patients must have a co-occurring KIT exon 11 plus a 17 or 18 mutation and cannot harbor a KIT exon 9, 13, or 14 mutation. Patients enrolled and are part of the sunitinib arm may have the option to cross over to repritinib, which is very important to note. 
Eligibility for this specific trial is that patients must have prior treatment to imatinib only or who are intolerant to imatinib. Patients who have taken sunitinib are not eligible. And patients who wish to enroll will receive CTDNA to determine mutation eligibility. And this has to do partly because of the co-occurring mutations. So we want to ensure whoever is, or Decipher wants to ensure that whoever is joining the trial fits into the uh, mutation characteristics that they have put out. Here is the contact information. And as I had shared, this is an international study. So there are trial sites all over the world. And here are the states within the United States that there are trial sites. The next trial I want to talk about for KIT and PDGFRA focused patients is the IDRX42 by IDRX. This is an open label, also international study. Uh, for the phase one, they are assessing safety and tolerability of the drug in patients who have failed at least a matinib first line. So this is second line and, and more. Phase 1b has four exploratory cohorts. So within those, cohort 1 is for patients who have progressed on a matinib only, so second line. Cohort 2 is for patients who have progressed on third line, fourth line, and fifth line. And then for cohort 3, this is for patients who have not taken any type of treatment so treatment naive or have refused or are ineligible for standard treatment. So that is for uh, for one for first line. And then cohort four is for patients who have met the same criteria as cohort two. So anyone who is um, third line and above, but have had prior exposure to NB003, Theseus or PEAK. It's extremely important to make a note that IDRX 42 is still in phase one and that phase one B is not yet open. So the cohorts that I just talked about, these are not yet open, they are still in phase one. Eligibility for this is because they are still in phase one, patients who have taken or have exposure to NB003, CCS 630 or PEAK, are ineligible at this time. Patients must have a documented kit or PDGFRA other than exon 18 mutation. Down below is the contact information for IDRX. And this trial also is international and it has trial sites in the United States as well as uh, Spain, Germany, and Belgium. The last trial I want to talk about within the KIT and PDGFRA focused trials is the DCC3116 trial by Decipra. This is a relatively new trial and it is a phase one, two open label study of DCC3116 in combination with anti-cancer therapies. In the dose escalation phase, they will be assessing the safety and dose finding for just patients with a confirmed diagnosis of KIT or PDGFRA mutation who have progressed on at least one approved medication. So that would be for second line, at, or at least second line. In the dose expansion phase, they will be focusing on patients with a confirmed KIT exon 11 GIST who have progressed locally or metastatically and have received a matinib only. So for the dose expansion phase, they will be uh, refining their, their criteria and it will only be open for kit exon 11 patients who have progressed locally or in a metastatic setting for second line only. Eligibility for this trial is that patients must have a measurable disease. They must provide fresh tumor biopsy or adequate archival tissue sample, and patients must agree to provide an on-treatment biopsy. This trial is only available in the United States currently, and there are um, trial sites in Oregon, Michigan, Ohio, New York, and Florida.
Next, I want to talk about SDH deficient focused trials. The first SDH trial that I want to talk about is the Belzutifan trial by Merck. This is an SDH deficient directed with a goal of understanding the efficacy and safety of Belzutifan in multiple cancers, which include GIST. GIST is in their cohort C of the trial study. Eligibility for this trial is that patients must have a documented absence of PDGFRA and KIT genes. Patients must have a locally advanced or metastatic disease that is inoperable. And for the patient for patient age eligibility for this trial is 12 years and older. The reason why is typically we'll see trials for just patients where it says that a, the patient must be 18 years or older. But as we know for SDH, the the age population is usually younger patients. So that's why the age is uh, a bit less than the typical 18 years. This trial is also international uh, with trial sites in North America, Europe, Asia, as well as Australia. Next, I want to talk about Inabrix 109 by Inabrix. This is an open label, non-randomized trial for locally advanced or metastatic solid tumors that include sarcomas. Because this is for multiple sarcomas, the SDH directed GIST has an age eligibility of patients between 18 and 85 years of age. In the dose escalation phase, they will be assessing the advanced or metastatic sarcomas that are intolerant to standard therapy. In dose expansion, the study will understand the multiple types of cancers and certain sarcoma subtypes, which include GIST. So GIST will be, uh, will be included in the dose expansion. Eligibility for this trial is that patients must have measurable disease, so they cannot be NED, cannot have undergone radiotherapy within four weeks prior to the first dose, and they cannot have any liver-directed radiotherapy within 12 months prior to the first dose. This trial is only available in the United States currently with trial sites throughout the country with, uh, with, with a lot of them. Down below is the contact information for the study sponsor. The next trial for SDH patients is the NEO-B or NEO-RAY trial by Novartis. This is an open label evaluating the safety and tolerability of NEO-B in patients with advanced solid tumors. In dose escalation, this will conduct for this will be conducted for patients who have a certain advanced or metastatic tumor. This uh, phase will include GIST. In the dose expansion, there are four, four cohorts that they will be studying and GIST is in cohort C. Eligibility for this trial is that patients must have one measurable lesion. And it's important to note that patients with bone lesions will still be eligible. For more information or to contact the study sponsor, down below is the email address. And this trial is international with trial sites in the United States as well as in Europe. Next, I want to talk about trials that are sarcoma focused. However, they still include GIST. This trial is the NB003, which I have uh, talked about uh, in the in the previous trials that I spoke about. Uh, this trial is by Newbay. This is a phase one open label to assess the safety and tolerability of NB003 in patients with advanced malignancies, which include GIST. In dose escalation, they will be enrolling patients with GIST who have progressed or have intolerability to imatinib and other standards of cares to determine maximum administered dose. In the dose expansion phase, they will continue to further explore the safety and tolerability of NB003. 
This trial is international with trial sites in the United States, Europe, as well as Asia. GIST patients must have progressed on or had an intolerability to imatinib and other standards of cares or have refused other standards of care. This trial has six cohorts, and the cohorts are cohort one is for patients with a KIT or PDGFRA mutation who have progressed on or are intolerant to at least imatinib, sunitinib, regorafenib, and repritinib. So this cohort will be for fifth line or greater. Cohort 2A is for just patients with KIT or PDGFRA gene mutations who have progressed on or are intolerant to imatinib and sunitinib and have not received any additional systemic therapy. So this cohort 2A is for third line therapy. Cohort 2B is for patients in a fourth line setting. So anyone, any just patient with a KIT or PDGFRA gene mutation who have progressed or are an intolerant to imatinib, sunitinib, and regorafenib. Cohort three is for patients, just patients with a KIT or PDGFRA gene mutation who have progressed to or are intolerant to imatinib only. Uh, so it's in a second line setting. Cohort four is for just patients with a PDGFRA exon 18 mutation who have progressed or are intolerant to avapritinib or are in a country or region where avapritinib is not a standard of care. Uh, it's important to note that in cohort, cohort four, avapritinib naive patients can also be enrolled. So if a patient is kit exon, uh, sorry, PDGFRA exon 18 mutation and have not taken um, avapritinib, they would still be eligible to enroll should they decide to. Cohort five is for patients with unreceptable or metastatic melanoma patients with a demonstrated evidence for KIT gene mutation or amplification and have progressed or are intolerant to other standards of cares. And lastly, cohort six is for patients with other advanced malignancies other than GIST or melanoma, which must be relapsed or refractory without an available effective therapy and harbor KIT or PDGFRA gene alterations. So GIST is in cohorts one through four, and then for five and six, these are for uh, cohort five is for melanoma patients, and then cohort six is for um, other malignancies that are not GIST or melanoma. Down below is the contact, inf contact information for the study sponsor. Next, I want to talk about observational GIST trials. So observational GIST trials are different than the investigational trials because investigational trials have a type of drug that is being investigated, whereas an observational trial is uh, observing a, a patient over a period of time. The Surgery in GIST for Treatment, Tumor Modeling, and Genomic Analysis study by the National Cancer Institute is an observational study, so there is no medication that is administered. Patients who are on a different trial can still join. For example, a patient on PEAK would still be eligible to also join the NIH's observational study. This study will follow people with GIST and collect tumor tissue to study in a lab. The aim of this study is to assess disease-free intervals between surgery. Imaging will be done every 6 to 12 months at the NIH for up to 10 years before having surgery. If a patient does require surgery, it will be done at the NIH. If and when patient has surgery, tumor tissue samples will be taken. And as, as, as I had shared before, this is an observational study. Eligibility for this is patients age six and older who have GIST. This trial has only one trial site location, which is in Maryland at the NIH. And down here, if you would like to join or have any additional questions, here is the uh, contact information down below. It's important to stay up to date. Study sponsors often make amendments to their trials by opening up new cohorts or changing eligibility. 
Because of this, it's important to continue to provide updates to the LifeRock Group's patient registry so we can notify you if you become eligible for a trial. We are currently optimizing our patient registry to have a clinical trial matching, so it's very important for you to ensure that your patient registry record is as up-to-date as possible so that we can ensure that if there is any changes to uh, to trials or any new trials that open up that we are able to share the news with you. Uh, we will have a more in-depth webinar on the process of trials and how they work on May 22nd, uh, and it will be presented by Dr. Haddix. And with that, I do like to thank everyone for, for joining today. If you have any questions or any additional uh, comments or would like more information on any specific trials, feel free to reach out to me. And I once again want to thank everyone for joining and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the day.